end of the road disc. You, me, right now. As far as ambiance is concerned, it's not quite what I would have chosen for the grand finale of our long association. Something perhaps a bit more regal, or even a touch gladiatorial. But as arenas go, at least this one certainly comes with a very appreciative audience. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Parker? As I look around this room, I see murderers and rapists, thieves and thugs, perverts and psychotics, men who may once have aspired to be more than these things, but have settled for the names they have been given. But no matter how debased, perverse, crude, or fallen, there's not a man here who does not look down on one particular breed of humanity. The chump. The chump is someone who believes in the greater good, who believes that good triumphs because it is good. Trust the government, trust his fellow citizens, trust the man in the iron mask who says, Show the world your true face, Peter. It'll be okay. Yeah, and we all saw that face, didn't we? The face of a chump. A chump who is now hunted by the people he believed in, spurned by the system he supported, abandoned by the friends he thought he had, his wife living in a two-bit motel, and his dear sweet aunt dying in a hospital bed because he couldn't even stand still long enough to take the bullet that was his by right. <laughs> but I guess you can't make an omelette without breaking a few old ladies. <laughs> Even his usual sense of humor and devil-may-care attitude seems to have abandoned him. Must be terribly distressing and unfortunate to have absolutely nothing left in life except a desire for revenge. Which is especially unfortunate since once you've made a mockery of everything you stand for and victimized the woman you said you loved, really. What's left except humor? Moving like the trapdoor spider you imagine yourself to be, huh? Leaping on the prey suddenly in hopes of wearing it out or confusing it, eh? Cheap theatrics. I had expected better. Well, you said you were coming here to kill me. Are you here to fight or dance? Say something, damn you! What this suit stands for, what it means, is something you can never understand. It represents a promise about all the things I said I would do, and all the things I said I would never do. The lines I said I would never, ever cross, because doing so would destroy everything this suit stands for. And that, you see, is why you're confused. I'm not here to kill you. I am. You forgot something, Fisk. Something you should have remembered before you decided to put a bullet through someone too old and frail to get out of the way. And it's this. For all your money, for all your cruelty, for all your big talk, you don't have any real power. You can't fly, can't stick to walls, can't turn into living flame or stretch out across a 20-foot room. At the end of the day, you're just a fat man with an attitude. A balloon just waiting for someone to stick a needle in. And me? I'm the needle. <laughs> Kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill. <laughs> get up, Fisk! I said, get up! <laughs> Go to hell. I'll get up when I. I can't. Needle. Now, here's how it's going to happen. I pour a stream of webbing deep into your throat, your esophagus, all the way down into your lungs, filling them completely. The only way to remove it surgically would be to cut out your lungs, which could not possibly be done before you die from lack of oxygen. I turn your entire respiratory system into one big solid chunk of useless tissue and webbing. It takes three seconds. One, two, three. What? If you 
going to kill me. Get it over with. Oh, I will. I said I was going to kill you, and I am. But I didn't say I was going to do it today. You see, I've learned something from you, Fisk. Something about cruelty and timing. I've done something far worse than kill you, Fisk. I've beaten you. And every man in this room saw me beat you. And they will tell their pals, and those guys will tell their pals. And on and on. And soon the whole city, the whole country, will know what you already know. That you've been beaten in public, one on one. And as for a man as prideful as you, who needs for everyone to believe he can't be beaten, that's the worst pain you can ever feel. I want you to live with that knowledge because I know it will tear you apart deep inside every waking moment of every day. I want you to live in that kind of personal hell. I want you to burn Fisk for a while at least. And then, you see, I've always tried to avoid killing anyone and partly because I was always afraid how it would affect my family. But if my aunt is dead, well, that takes care of one reason, and the other, well, I can make an exception. The moment my aunt dies, I'm coming back for you, and we're going to finish where we started. And as of right now, you know that there is nothing you can do to stop me. I will come to you, and I will count. One, two, three, and then you'll be dead. I swear to you on my life and her soul, on everything I hold dear, you'll be dead. Meanwhile, you'll live with the memory of this moment, the humiliation of this moment, and the message of this moment, which is directed at the rest of you and everyone you know. Put the word out. If anyone comes near me or my family again, if anyone even touches them or anyone else who matters to me, you will experience firsthand what happened here today. You touch them, you die painfully, slowly, definitively. You ordered her death, Fisk, so it's only appropriate that your life ends when hers does. So if I were you, I'd start praying right about now to try to convince God to give her every possible second of life. To tell you the truth, in your position, I wouldn't count too much on God if I were you. See you around, Mr. Fisk. Count on it.